So I'm a pretty big fan of modeling in SketchUp. I love the program and I use it all the time. However, there are some things that I think can make the program even better. And honestly, I think there's some areas where the program could improve in order to stay competitive in the long term. So these are 10 areas that I think SketchUp could improve their tool set to become an even better program. Okay, so within SketchUp's new rendering engine, you currently can only light your scene using an HDRI background. So this uses the environment in order to cast light in your scene. And while this is great for exterior renders, it's not really fantastic for interior renders. And if you think about interior spaces, they're almost always lit by some sort of artificial light when you're actually in them in the real world. Well, currently there's no function to add things like point lights, area lights and spotlights, and it significantly limits the kinds of renderings that you can create. So artificial lighting inside of the rendering engine is something that uh, I think is pretty necessary for being able to do good interior renders in SketchUp. Okay, and so next up in the rendering engine, we need some sort of path tracing because right now, and this is a great example, so if I take this sphere, I apply a metallic material to it, notice how it actually reflects the background really well. But the problem is, if you look in here, this sphere is inside of a building, right? You can see how this is whatever image I have in here. So like, for example, this one, if you look at it, it's reflecting off of this object in a way that's like way too bright. It's reflecting as if the sun was right here, but there's no sun because this is an interior scene. So what this does is this means that any reflections that you have are just reflecting something in the background that you shouldn't actually be able to see inside of the 3D space. Some kind of realistic reflections I think is going to be really important um, inside of this engine if people want to use it for actual rendering. Okay, so before we go any further, real quick, I want to talk about the elephant in the room, which is extensions. Now, one of the things that makes SketchUp really powerful is that you can add functions to SketchUp using extensions. And SketchUp users have, right? Fredo6, TomTom, tons of developers have added amazing things inside of SketchUp. There's a few problems with extensions. First off, some of them are paid which is fine. I think developers deserve to get paid for their work. But if SketchUp is going to lean on this functionality, they have to also recognize that some users feel that they're being charged extra or charged a tax to have tools that other 3D modeling programs have by default. And that's something that's very important because it, well, while it does make SketchUp like the Swiss army knife for modeling, it also does make it feel like, well, why wouldn't I just go with something else that just has all the things I need built in? So that's one thing to think about. The other thing to think about with extensions is sometimes we have extensions that we've had for years or even a decade at this point, and you never know with the new version of SketchUp if they're going to keep working. Shapebender is a great example of something you can use in order to bend things along curves, and if it stops working, then it's something that the entire SketchUp user base has suddenly lost this tool, and there's nothing else that really like works the same. So the problem with third-party extensions is you may or may not have third-party developers that can update them when SketchUp changes. And so you could lose a massively important tool and you have no clue if it's going to be there in the next version. This stuff is really important. And so it is why I think some things should be added as native tools inside of SketchUp. So with all that said, SketchUp actually has really good array functionality built in for copying things along straight lines and even along radiuses. However, having a native tool that allows you to place things along paths instead of relying on the older path copy extension or the paid path array extension would be extremely helpful. This is something we do all the time um, in architectural style applications, and it would be nice to have something built in that allows you to do this. Bonus points of this could be made non-destructive. So like here's an example of how Blender does it where you can actually um, create an array along a curve and it'll dynamically adjust based on what you do to that curve. More about curves in a minute. But um, having a path copy tool is an architectural tool that I think makes a ton of sense for SketchUp users. Okay, so this one's maybe a little more advanced modeling. Um, so it's useful for some people and not others, but having some advanced bending and deforming tools built into SketchUp would be also extremely helpful because you have to go across like multiple different extensions with different tool sets to be able to do different things. But I mean, in general, having the ability to do simple 
bends, like bending objects along curves and twisting objects built into SketchUp, as well as having the ability to take objects and generally place them along curves. So deforming objects along curves would be really nice because a lot of the time you do need to do things like creating cladding that goes along a curved surface or something like that. And that can be very difficult or sometimes impossible with the native tools. So having some kind of bending and deforming tool set built into SketchUp could be helpful for people that are creating more advanced models. Now, you could say, well, why don't you go create these in a, in a different program and then come back? But then you're just saying, oh yeah, SketchUp can't do this. Why don't you just go to another program that can, which I don't think is really great. Now, I'm not saying SketchUp needs to be the most amazing advanced modeling tool on the planet by any means, but adding some of these basic functions, I think could really help expand SketchUp's user base. Now, another thing that I'd really like to see upgraded inside of SketchUp is the material mapping capabilities because SketchUp works fine for applying materials to flat surfaces. It's actually very simple and easy to use as long as the surface is completely flat. And I actually really like that about the program because you don't need a whole bunch of complicated stuff in order to do the simple materials. But it kind of falls apart when you get into more complex surfaces because it doesn't always know how to map onto those surfaces. Now, there is a third-party extension for this called Through Paint from Fredo 6, and I use it all the time. It allows you to adjust sizes and placement on curved surfaces, but you don't have anything built in using SketchUp's actual native tools. Now, you do have the position texture function, but position texture does not work on curved surfaces. I'd be fine with an update that allowed position texture to work on curved surfaces or complex surfaces, that would be great. Um, I don't know that we necessarily need like full on UV mapping or anything like that. I know that gets a lot more technical and complicated, but having some kind of tool set that allows me to drop a material on a face, set the kind of mapping that I want and then scale it. But again, something that's native to SketchUp. Um, I love through paint, but I find it can get a little bit unstable sometimes. Um, and again, this is just another thing where it's like, well, if you need to properly manage materials, you need an extension. Well, I, I would love to see something built in that gives you more control over these materials that doesn't require a third party extension in SketchUp. Okay. So another thing I would really like to see, and I know this is kind of an AutoCAD thing typically, but it just makes sense is I would really like to see the ability to control your line dashes and line weights inside of the actual entity info itself. Because right now, the way that we control line weights and dashes inside of SketchUp is the dashes are controlled in the tags section. So basically anything that's put on a tag, um, you can set if it's dashed or not. So in this case, say that I wanted my exterior walls to be dashed. What I would do is I would set my dashes over here using the tag functionality. So you can kind of see that right here where you're getting these dashes on the outside. The thing is though, it's really weird to set this based on the actual tag itself because we use tags for visibility, right? So we use tags to be able to toggle different parts and pieces of a model on and off, right? Like things like doors, things like windows, other things like that. Having to use a tag instead, especially when you can't multi-tag an object um, for dashed lines gets really weird because what you have to do is you have to start grouping some things oddly in order to get them into layout in a way where the dashes actually show up properly. And so the other thing that's weird with this is in addition to controlling your dashes using whatever tag an object is on, you also control your line weights based on your scenes and then settings that you set over in layout. So for example, in this case, what I have to do if I want my doors to be a different line weight than my walls, I have to create a walls view and a doors view. And then I can go into my uh, styles. So if I go into styles, do an edit, I can adjust the section line width or the profiles inside of the styles themselves. But the problem with this is because we're setting it based on a style, we have to have a separate view for each line weight. Then you have to stack them together in layout. So if I go over into layout, I have to have two separate viewports. I have to have a viewport which has all my walls in it. So you can see that right here. Then I have to have another viewport which has all my doors and windows on it so that I can go in here in my uh, SketchUp model settings. So if I go into SketchUp model right here and I adjust this line, 
thickness, I can adjust it over here. But I have to have this on like a separate view that I have to stack on top of something else. And that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me. Like it would make a whole lot more sense if you just had a setting in SketchUp where you could go in here and you could select these. And then inside of your entity info, you could say line weight two, instead of having to go through all of this with like stacking viewports and things like that. So my group should be able to, I should be able to control the line weights up here. And then I could put all of this into one viewport because then what I'd be able to do is just select my doors and say, okay, in this one viewport, I want my doors to be a heavier line weight. I want my walls to be a lighter line weight, things like that. But instead I have to have multiple scenes that I stack together inside of layout, which is a very clunky workflow. So I would love to see the ability to just control those dashes based on a group object rather than on a tag um, and also be able to control the line weights the same way. Okay, so next up would be a tool that would be massively helpful for a lot of different uses and that would be the ability to draw polylines and more complex lines using SketchUp's curve tools. So right now you're very limited right now in the curve tools, right? You have the freehand tool, which is not super good, right? You can kind of draw along here, but this is not going to be a smooth curve in any way. Um, it has a ton of segments and other things like that. It's just, it's not super good. So I don't know anyone that's like substantially using the freehand tool um, just because it doesn't allow you to draw smooth curves. The other option though, is say you needed to trace around this and there's a ton of use cases by the way for a tool like this, but I'm just showing you one. So right now you have to come in here with the three point arc tool and try to like, and try to draw smooth curves using three point arcs. And these, these are splines that have been drawn using a more complex curve tool. And sometimes the three point arc tool does a great job, but sometimes it really doesn't do a very good job at all. It would be really nice to have the ability to actually draw like splines and curves in SketchUp that are more complex than a three point arc. Now there is a paid tool for this called Fredo spline that does a really good job. So it allows you to create multiple different kinds of curves. It allows you to lock to an axis. So it does a like way, way better job than um, the built-in SketchUp tools that allowing you to do this. The other bonus about something like this is it also allows you to edit the curve. So I'm just going to close this curve out. You can right click on this and you can edit the curve. So you can actually drag these points and it allows you to edit the curve inside of SketchUp, which I think is something that's really important um, for actually being able to draw good curves is the ability to change and adjust them if they don't align the way you want. But I, I think it's time for SketchUp to have a better curve editing system in here. Um, so I, I would say it probably needs to be non-destructive, kind of like this one right here. And I, I think larger than just this tool, I think there needs to be some kind of non-destructive functionality added to SketchUp just in general, but especially for a curve function, you know, you do need to be able to come in here and make these changes. But I think this is something that's pretty vital for 3D modeling in general is being able to draw these more complex curves. And I think SketchUp needs a tool specifically designed to be able to do that. Okay, so this is one I don't think I've talked about before, but it would be, maybe I have, but it would be extremely helpful to be able to do math in the value control bar. So here's a great example. So let's say that I wanted to draw a line along the center of this object right here. Now I, I could come in here and get kind of crazy with the offset tool, right? And try to like offset things and to find the middle. But usually what I end up doing is I end up drawing segments like this, and then I use inferencing in order to find the middle of the object. Now you could also use guides in order to do this, but it would be really nice um, to be able to, if you draw a line, so my exterior walls are gonna be about five inches, right? It would be really nice to be able to draw a line right here, and then just type in something like plus 2.5 and have it add an additional two and a half inches to the end of that line, right? Like right now you can't do that. What you have to do is you have to figure out that overall length. So you can draw this in here, right here. And once I click, I could type in 17 foot. Um, to See, I have to do all of the math in my head to even figure out what that would be. So I end up not doing it, but it would be really nice to be able to draw um, from a point to another point and then type in plus or minus. So minus 2.5 and be able to drop that out by two and a half inches less than where we were before. So another place where this would be extremely helpful is I have all these dynamic 
drawers that I've created. But the problem is right now with those dynamic drawers, what I have to do is I have to either scale them to the outside and then they're going to have a little bit of an inset. So what I would have to do is I would have to use a guide right here to figure out what that inset's going to be. Unless I've set this up with a spacer around the outside, which is a thing that I've done in the past. But in this case, what I would have to do is I'd have to come in here and I'd have to create a guide. It's going to be an eighth of an inch in. And then I would have to come find that guide and inference to it in order to scale to it right here. It would be really nice if I could take an object like this one and scale it. So say that I could scale it right here and do the same thing, type in minus one eighth and have it come back in here. Now, obviously that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Um, and the scale tool gets a little bit weird, but it would be really nice to be able to live make adjustments to that value using math inside of the value control bar. That is something I would use every day all day, most of the time that I'm modeling things inside of SketchUp. So math in the value control bar would be fantastic. And I would love to see that added to SketchUp. Okay, so this next one is not new. It's been talked about a bunch, but the ability to add hatching to section fills um, without having to go through and manually add them in layout would be really fantastic. So at the moment, Right, we have the ability inside of our styles. If we go to our um, settings, we can adjust the section fill. And that's good if you want things like colors. So if I adjust this in here, right, this will apply whatever color to the section fill that I select. So wherever the section plane cuts through your model, it'll do a color. And that's fine. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Um, that's actually very useful. I use it all the time. But I would also like to have the ability to have this be a hatch instead because right now the way that we can hatch things in SketchUp is you have to you have to basically export it to layout and then within layout you have to come draw over top of this so I have to come in here and draw a box over top of this wall like this which for one-time things is probably fine right not that big of a deal then you can go into your settings in your pattern fill and you can add a pattern fill and we'll just pick this one right here. So you can definitely do that. You can add that right here and you can adjust the scale of the hatch. But the problem with that is I have to do it manually. So let's say I have my overall floor plan right here and I wanted to hatch out like this, for example, I have to come in here and I have to draw this. I have to draw this. I have to draw this and I have to pick them all up. I have to add the hatch to them. So you have to manually do this. Well, the thing is, if I change this in my SketchUp model, this is not linked to my model. So if I move this over by six inches, I'm going to have to redraw my hatch on top of it. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but it's very inconvenient. And I would much rather be able to just control the hatching using SketchUp and using the section cut rather than having to do all this manual work to get hatches in the way that I want them in. And then finally, we have a native bevel tool. And so being able to bevel edges inside of a um, software, especially an architectural modeling software, is really important. And um, for some reason, this is an omission from SketchUp's tool set. It's also an example I see brought up a lot as an example of SketchUp not having basic tools inside of the tool set, but instead needing paid extensions like Fredo Corner or the bevel extension from Mindsight Studios. And so I think this is a really important tool. And also just something that I think should be added to SketchUp. I know you can create bevels um, manually by using the push-pull tool or the follow me tool, but um, it's just kind of clunky. And honestly, I feel like this is something that should be in an architectural modeling tool set. So I would absolutely love to see a bevel tool added to SketchUp. And I think it would also help uh, SketchUp go a long way towards silencing some of those critics. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what tools you'd like to see added to SketchUp. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.